Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be exploring a brand new test for series convergence. The idea is that we'll be able to test the convergence of certain series by exploring the convergence of a related improper integral. If the improper integral converges, so too does the series. If the improper integral diverges, so too does the series. Often, checking the convergence of the integral is a little bit easier. Now this test can't be used all the time, it only applies in certain situations, and it won't tell you the sum of the series, just whether the series converges or diverges. However, if the series does converge, we can use the value of that related integral to estimate the sum. This test is very fittingly called the integral test. The motivating question for today's discussion concerns this series, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared. That is, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9, and so on. The question is, does this series converge or diverge? Well, let's think about this. The terms in our series are certainly getting smaller, right? The terms tend to zero when k goes to infinity. This means that our series passes the test for divergence, and therefore, this test won't allow us to draw any conclusions. The only other test we have at this point is the geometric series test, but unfortunately, this is not a geometric series. So we're gonna have to think of another way to analyze its convergence. I'm gonna start by viewing the terms in my series a little bit differently, a little more geometrically. I'm gonna think of each of these terms like the area of a little rectangle. I'm adding up a bunch of rectangular areas and I wanna know if the result is finite. Specifically, I'm gonna think of the term one over k squared, like the area of a rectangle whose width is one and whose height is, well, one over k squared. The height is therefore given by the value of this function, f of x equals one over x squared, at the point x equals k. Graphically, the height of my first rectangle is given by f of one, right, one over one squared, and the width of that rectangle we said would be one. So I can think of the first term in my series like the area of this rectangle. For the second term, the height of my rectangle is one over two squared, so the value of the function at two, and again, the width is going to be one. So I think of the second term like the area of this second rectangle. And now I think you see where this is going. I'm gonna think of my third term as the area of this rectangle, the fourth term as the area of this rectangle, and so on. My series is therefore given by the sum of these red rectangular areas. The question is, does that sum converge? Or when I add up those areas, does it just continue to grow and grow and grow without bound, and hence diverge? To answer this question, I'm going to make the following observation. These red rectangles sit underneath the graph of the function f of x equals one over x squared, which means that there's more area enclosed between the x-axis and the blue curve than there is underneath these red rectangles. So let's think about this for a moment. If the area underneath my blue curve and above the x-axis is finite, at least over in this part of the region as x goes off to infinity, then the red rectangles must also enclose a finite area, and hence my series will converge. So this will be our game plan. We note that the sum of one over k squared from k equals one to infinity is less than or equal to the area enclosed by my curve y equals f of x. Now that curve does some crazy stuff near zero, it's not continuous there, so I'm gonna actually say that the area of my rectangles is less than or equal to the area of this first rectangle, which is one, plus the area under the remaining part of the function, where the function is nice and continuous. That I can represent as an integral. So on the right hand side here we have one plus that area under f of x from one to infinity, which is the improper integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx. Ooh, now we can evaluate this improper integral using what we know from Math 117. Specifically, we're going to find an antiderivative for one over x squared, which I believe is minus one over x, and I evaluate that antiderivative from one to t, where here t is going off to infinity. So we have to take a limit. What we get is one plus the limit as t goes to infinity of minus one over t plus one over one. Well, as t goes off to infinity, this term is gonna go to zero and I get a final answer of two, a finite number. Oh, would you look at this? The blue region encloses a finite area, 
an area of two. Since the red rectangles enclose a smaller area, we conclude that this series is convergent and in fact the sum is less than or equal to two. This is the idea behind the integral test. If the integral converges, then the series converges as well. Now folks, it turns out this series is actually a very famous one. It was studied by Euler back in the 1700s. Euler, that little show off, was actually able to show that the sum of this series is exactly pi squared over six. That's pretty cool. Note, by the way, that pi squared over six is around 1.64. It is indeed less than two. Now, showing that the sum is exactly pi squared over six is beyond the scope of our course, but there's a very cute proof of this using Fourier series, something you might encounter later in your degree. If you want to hear more about it, come talk to me. We've now been introduced to the general idea behind the integral test. Suppose that you have some function f of x, and you're trying to add up the numbers f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and so on. Well, as long as your function f of x satisfies certain nice conditions, namely it's continuous, it's positive, meaning it's above the x-axis, and it's decreasing, then we can do the exact same trick that we did on the last slide to study the convergence of this series. Specifically, we can think of the terms in our series as rectangular areas. The area f of k will come from a rectangle whose width is 1 and whose height is f of k. We can visualize these as right endpoint rectangles just as we did in the previous example. Since our function is decreasing, these right endpoint rectangles lie under the curve. This means that on the interval from 1 to infinity, the graph of my function is going to enclose more area than these infinitely many red rectangles at the end. Therefore, we conclude that if the area under our curve is finite, that is, if this improper integral converges, then the sum of our rectangular areas is finite, that is, our series converges. This gives us a really nice relationship between this improper integral and this infinite series. If the improper integral converges, then the series converges as well. But a natural question to ask is, what happens if this improper integral diverges? To answer this question, we'll take another look at our graph. Suppose that the integral diverges, so that this blue region actually encloses an infinite amount of area. Since the red rectangles lie underneath this blue curve, I guess it's possible that they could also enclose an infinite amount of area, and hence this series would diverge as well. But hold on a second. Couldn't it also be possible that the red rectangles under the curve are significantly smaller than the curve? Maybe if they're small enough, they would only enclose a finite amount of area, and hence this series would converge. Remarkably, however, this will never be the case. It turns out that if this integral diverges, so too will your series. And I can convince you by just drawing the picture slightly differently. Rather than drawing right endpoint rectangles for my series, I'm gonna draw them as left endpoint rectangles. My first rectangle still has a height of f of one, but I'm now going to use one as the left endpoint. Similarly, my second rectangle still has a height of f of two, but two is now going to be my left endpoint. And I continue this process. You can see that we're getting exactly the same red rectangles in the second picture that we had in the first picture, except now they've all shifted to the right by one unit. This simple shift to the right gives us a brand new perspective on the situation. In the second picture, we can now see that the area enclosed by the red rectangles is larger than the area beneath the graph of my function. Ah, but this is exactly what we were looking for. We can now figure out what happens when this integral diverges. If the integral diverges, then this blue region encloses an infinite amount of area. But since the red rectangles must enclose even more area, they must also enclose an infinite amount. That is, my series will diverge. So here's the complete picture. If the integral converges, then the series converges. But conversely, if the integral diverges, then the series must diverge as well. This, folks, is our integral test. And I'm going to give you a precise statement on the next slide. Well, here it is, folks, the integral test in all its glory. If you have a function f that's continuous, positive, and decreasing on the interval from 1 to infinity, then this series, f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 and so on, this series converges if and only if this improper integral converges. Said a little differently, if the improper integral converges, then the series converges.
If the improper integral diverges, then the series diverges. The two do the same thing. I'll end this video with a few remarks regarding the use of the integral test. Firstly, the function f has to satisfy three assumptions. It has to be continuous, positive, and decreasing on the interval from 1 to infinity. If you want to use the integral test, you have to verify that these assumptions hold. Secondly, okay, you don't actually need them to hold on 1 to infinity. It's enough for them to hold on a to infinity. If your function doesn't start out positive or doesn't start out decreasing, that's okay. As long as eventually it satisfies these assumptions, you can use the integral test on the interval a to infinity. Finally, maybe you're wondering about when the integral test should be used. Well, here's my advice. If you're ever working with a series like this, and you notice that the function f of x is easy to integrate, the integral test is probably a good choice. I'll show you how this works in the example video to follow.